Hey, how's it going? Shane Olson here. Welcome to my YouTube channel where I talk about all things stylized characters, specifically in the 3D space. And I love to do digital sculpting. In fact, my favorite piece of software that I like to digital sculpt with is called ZBrush, made by Pixelogic. And I love to create my own custom user interface for ZBrush and share it with the world, share it with you, as well as all my brushes and my project file. And that is what this video is all about. Pixelogic just barely released ZBrush 2022, and I made a brand new interface for it for you to download. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. So let's get to it. Okay, so we're in ZBrush 2022. And this is my new updated user interface. You may have used my older interface in the past, and I've made a few tweaks, a few changes. Um, I'm not going to go through how to install my user interface because it comes with the instructions when you download it. If you want my brushes and my user interface and my project file, you can find the link to it right below in the description, okay? So I, I just wanna lightly cover over all of the stuff I've changed. I'm not gonna go deep diving into what these brushes do. I'm gonna save those for later videos, okay? I, I don't wanna bore you with all of that stuff, but I am gonna tell you why I changed a lot of this stuff, okay? So going at the top left. Now, a little theory behind this user interface when I very first created it was I wanted to kind of stick with what Pixelogic had set for its default user interface. So when you followed along with other tutorials, you wouldn't be lost. You could, you could kind of find where everything was. And for the most part, the top left and the upper left, those are kind of similar to the default user interface, okay? But when you come down to here, these are all custom, all, a bunch of my custom brushes, and uh, I've, I've customized all the stuff at the bottom. And over here, this is mostly uh, stock ZBrush stuff over here, but I've moved a few things, just, just a few, okay? So really quickly, um, this is the same. This just tells you what brush you have loaded, um, what stroke that brush is, what alpha is loaded. Now, I found that I wasn't looking at texture or using textures that much, so I got rid of it. And I also didn't use materials that much as far as what material I had loaded on the, the character because you can actually see that right down here in these little preview spheres. So I have a uh, flat material and skin shade four like I've always had. And that's, that's just down here. And you can click on these and change whatever material you wanna use. So it was kind of redundant to have that extra sphere there. So I replaced it with this brush placement that basically tells you how deep the brush will cut into the surface. Um, and it's really useful for when you're doing things like curve tubes, when you're running tubes along a curve along the surface of your uh, character and you want it to push into the surface a little bit more, whereas Z intensity is not gonna do it, you're gonna have to mess with this. So that's why I wanted to have that on the user interface as well as this lighting ball. I really like this lighting ball because I can change where the default light is coming from because when you're sculpting, you're kind of sculpting with light and you wanna see it from different directions. So that's why I decided to pull that out onto my user interface. And also uh, Pixelogic has added ambient occlusion, screen space ambient occlusion a few releases ago and I wanted to put that on the user interface and you'll find that right there to activate it. And if you find your machine slowing down or if you have a, an older machine, feel free to click that off and it will make your machine faster. But all that basically does is uh, gather shadows in the cracks and crevices and basically gives you a little more surface information while you're sculpting. Okay, and this is just double-sided. It will show both the front and the back side of your geometry. And I also added flip normals. So if you have reversed normals on your mesh, you can quickly flip them right here. Um, I, find my, I found myself digging down in the tool menu for uh, flipping normals every once in a while. So I decided to put that out here. And this is the same as I've had it in the past my colors, black, white, and switching those colors, filling an object with color, and the materials, flat material and skin shade four, my favorite material, both right here. And then the T-pose mesh and T-pose sub T, those are when you're wanting to pose your character, you use these. And I've gotten rid of DynaMesh because that was just kind of a, an indicator with, and showing me, or showing you rather, whether uh, this object was DynaMesh or not. 
I, I felt like I just wasn't using it enough, so I, I pulled it off. And I was trying to make this whole list a bit shorter so the user interface will fit on laptops better, smaller screens. Um, and I added one thing to this, and that is the AccuCurve. Now, AccuCurve, like I said, I'm not going to go into these. If you want to find out what AccuCurve does specifically, I'm going to be releasing a video on that soon, uh, talking about hair. You'll find it in that video. Okay, so going across the top here, this is the same active points. That's the am am amount of points that's on the current subtool you have selected. And total points is all the points that you have on all the subtools in your scene. Um, and then live Boolean is the same. Edit, draw, move. Now I have removed rotate and scale because now with the gizmo, the gizmo has everything in it. Scale, move, rotate. So you don't need redundant buttons up here to select, select between them, okay? And you also have your hot keys, W, E, and R respectively, okay? And I do have this turn on gizmo on and off to go to the transpose tool because I'll occasionally use that. So I didn't remove that. And you have Sculptress Pro right here, as well as the Sculptress Pro subdivide size, which I've left the same. But now you'll notice that I removed the unsubdivide because that's that just affects smoothing and I don't really use it that much. So I removed it and instead I added Tessimate. This is a Tessimate slider. So I can essentially uh, flood fill my geometry with uh, dynamic topology, okay? You've seen me do it in my live streams if you've ever watched those but I, I can essentially grab this slider and move it and it will flood fill my object with a dynamic topology. Okay, that's, that's mostly used for uh, Sculptors Pro and I, I use it a lot and I love it. So that's why I put it up there. And um, I, I left the RGB intensity and the Z intensity. Those are for your brushes, color and depth. And RGB and material I've left, but I've gotten rid of MRGB and some other things. But this is just the color on your brush, and this is whether or not your brush affects the material. Um, so I, I left those up there. Focal shift and draw size, those remain the same. And uh, remember dynamic mode per brush. Some of you may or may not want that, so I left it. Um, lazy mouse is the same. Uh, symmetry is the same. Now I've moved dynamic subdivisions from this lower left. I've just moved it up here. Now, if you don't like it up here, feel free to move it back down. I mean, it's your inter after you download it, it's your user interface and you can do with it what you want. Okay, this is just the way I wanted to try and set it up. So now if I turn on dynamic, you can see that apply lights up. That's just where that is. And the reason I moved this up here is because you'll see I have this smooth subdivision levels, which will preview how many subdivision levels it's going to show you and right now it's set on two. You can crank it higher and it will go even smoother. Just be careful of that because it will bog down your machine if you crank it too high, okay? So just be careful with that. And then I also, I also always use thickness with my uh, dynamic subdivision. So I wanted access to that and you'll see how long this slider is. So I couldn't really fit it down here. It, will, it would have pushed that interface out. So that's why I moved it up here for the most part. And this on the right-hand side, this is all the same. I haven't touched it touched it since my last user interface. And if we go across the bottom, you'll see that a few things have changed. Now, if you go across here, you'll see my move brushes and there is a new one that I've been talking about during my live streams quite a bit recently, which is this move infinite depth. And I really, really like this brush, particularly coupled with AccuCurve. So these two together make a, a power couple that I really like a lot. So if I turn this on, turn on AccuCurve, um, what happens is this move infinite will shoot all the way through your model through both sides. So it's really, really nice for adjusting large things all the way through. And with this Accu curve, this essentially will uh, adjust the fall off and it will allow you to kind of scoot the, the mesh around. It's, I don't have time to demo it right now, but if, like I said, if you want to see how I use that brush, I'm going to be demonstrating how I use it in the, the, the hair video coming up. Okay, moving on down the line, I haven't changed any of these. These are all the same. Uh, you have your snake hook, chisel, inflate, all of these down to this new one called 3D CW Carve. Now this, I used to have an old carve brush that, um, that kind of worked similarly, but not exactly. And I since replaced it with the chisel brush because as you just saw, if you saw the video previous to this, 
I use this chisel brush as a carve brush, essentially. Um, if you haven't seen that video yet, I, uh, I um, recommend you go watch it. There's a link down in the description or just on my channel, you can find it. And this new carve brush, it, I wanted to make it because I was using the Orb Cracks brush, but there were a few things that were a little bit off that I wanted to tweak and just make sure that it worked better for this specific purpose. I love the Orbs brushes. Um, if I highly recommend you grab them. Just look for Orbs Orb Cracks and you'll find all of Orbs brushes. They're fantastic. Okay, so I'm going to apply this dynamic subdivisions and add a few more. So let me show you how this brush works. I've subdivided this a few times and you'll see that it goes from, from thin to thick to thin again. Because I specifically wanted to use this for hair and it works fantastically for hair, but I wanted a little bit more of a uh, transition as I used my tablet, okay? So that's that brush, I really, really like it. You'll see that I also got rid of clay buildup and replaced this carve brush with clay buildup because I found that I just wasn't using clay buildup too much and I can always grab it inside of this brush menu. Speaking of this brush menu, I had a lot of people tell me that they wanted all of my 3D Character Workshop brushes to be gathered together. And how you would do that is you start every brush named the same. So I renamed them all as 3DCW underscore brush name so that they would all be gathered together down here all in one list. So then you can find them really easily if you're looking for my specific brushes. So thank you for that suggestion. Um, and as we go down here, I, the only other thing that I replaced down here was the trim dynamic with H polish. I just found that I was using H polish a lot more than I was using trim dynamic, so I swapped those out. And then one more, this is really important, is this, I, I replaced trim cut with knife lasso. And this knife lasso is a brand new brush that Pixelogic just barely added to ZBrush, which I want to cover in depth in a different video. So I'm not gonna go into the uh, exactly what it does, but you should play with it. It's really, really fun. And that is it, except for the very, very end. You'll see that I, I added blur mask and sharpen mask. So, cause I was finding that I was using that a lot more often than I uh, wanted to go digging into this menu. Now, speaking of this menu, this custom menu comes with my user interface and you, I did adjust a few things within this menu, but not very many. I removed the camera off the bottom because I wasn't using that very much. Um, and I added morph target, save and remove. So store morph targets right here. And I got rid of the masking section in here because I put the blur mask and sharpen mask on the outside down in my interface. So that was redundant and I moved that. And um, then I put the home stage and target stage down at the very, very bottom because that's the new stager that I really, really like. So I put that down here and that's essentially all I really adjusted within this menu. If you have any questions, please let me know down in the comments and I would love to see what you create or um, also, you know, this, you can use my brushes in your own user interface. You don't have to use my interface in order to use the brushes, okay? And then the last thing was, it is this uh, ruler file is exactly the same as it was before. There's no, there's no difference. It's the same. So don't worry about that. And um, that's it for this video. We'll see you in the next one. Enjoy the brushes, guys. We'll see you later. Bye.